Did you know that some of the most beloved characters in fantasy are technically the bad guys? After two decades of crafting fantasy worlds and analyzing countless stories, I've uncovered a startling truth. The characters readers can't stop thinking about are often the ones they're supposed to hate. So in this video I'll reveal the ancient power of trickster archetypes in modern fantasy, how to craft multifaceted villains that challenge the traditional notions of evil, ways to use trickster villains to enhance your protagonist and plot, and how to weave moral ambiguity into your fantasy world. Are you ready to discover why evil might not always mean what you think it does? Then let me start down by breaking down how trickster villains are redefining evil in modern fantasy and why this matters for your story's success. Picture this, a character who lies, cheats and manipulates their way through your story. Someone who sows discord wherever they go. In traditional storytelling, this would be your clear-cut villain, right? But what if I told you that this character could become the most fascinating part of your fantasy world? Trickster villains turn the concept of evil on its head. They are not cackling maniacs bent on world domination. Instead, they are the embodiment of chaos, unpredictability and change. They challenge the status quo, forcing both your characters and your readers to question their assumptions about right and wrong. Think about Loki from Norse mythology or his modern incarnation in the Marvel Universe. He's a liar, a shapeshifter, a betrayer, and yet he's also charming, witty and often surprisingly vulnerable. Readers and viewers find themselves drawn to him even as they recognize his villainous actions. So why does this work? It's because humans are naturally drawn to complexity. We're fascinated by characters who defy easy categorization. A trickster villain speaks to the part of us that sometimes wants to break the rules, that wonders what it would be like to act without consequences. But it goes deeper than that. Trickster villains often serve as a mirror for society, pointing out hypocrisy and flaws in the established order. They make us question whether the good guys are always right, and if the ends justifies the means. By incorporating a trickster villain into your fantasy story, you're not just creating an antagonist, you're adding a layer of psychological depth that challenges readers to question their own perceptions of morality and truth. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but how do I create a trickster villain that feels authentic? And the answer lies in tapping into the rich history of trickster figures in mythology and folklore. Tricksters have been a part of human storytelling since we first gathered around campfires. They appear in cultures all around the world, from Anansi the spider in West African folklore, to Coyote in Native American myths, from the Greek god Hermes to the Japanese Tanuki. These ancient tricksters share common traits. They are shapeshifters, both literally and figuratively. They often act as messengers between gods and humans. They use their wit to overcome stronger opponents. They are driven by appetites for food, drink, sex or simply chaos. And their actions often bring unintended consequences, both good and bad. By understanding these mythological roots, you can create trickster villains that feel timeless and resonate on a subconscious level with your readers. Take George R. R. Martin's little finger from A Song of Ice and Fire. He embodies many classic trickster traits, he's adaptable, cunning and uses his wits to gain power. But Martin places him in a complex fantasy world where his machinations have far reaching consequences. Or consider Patrick Rothfuss's Kroth from the Kingkiller Chronicle. While not a villain in the traditional sense, Kroth has many trickster qualities. He's a talented musician, a magician who uses his wits to survive and thrive in a harsh world. His story is a great example of how to weave trickster elements into a protagonist's journey. By drawing inspiration from these mythical tricksters and seeing how modern authors have adapted them, you can create villains that feel both fresh and familiar. Now that you understand the power and history of trickster figures, let me break down how to craft a truly compelling trickster villain for your fantasy story. You see, the key to a great trickster villain is layers. They should be like an onion. Every time you peel back one facade, there's another underneath. Here are the essential elements. First, we have motivation. Your trickster needs a driving force. Maybe they are seeking revenge, or perhaps they genuinely believe their actions will bring about positive change. Whatever it is, it should be complex and relatable. Secondly, there is intelligence. Tricksters outsmart their opponents. Give your villain a keen mind and the ability to think several steps ahead. The third layer is adaptability. Tricksters are survivors. 
We should be able to change the plans on the fly and turn setbacks into advantages. Next, we also need to consider their charm. The best tricksters are likable, even when they're being villainous. Give them a silver tongue and a sense of humor. And lastly, there is the layer of vulnerability. To make your trickster truly compelling, they need a weakness. This could be emotional, physical, or tied to their past. Let's put these elements into practice. Imagine we're creating a trickster villain named Zara for a fantasy story. She's a former court magician who has been exiled for dabbling in forbidden magic. Her motivation? She wants to return to power and prove that her magical innovations could actually benefit the kingdom. Zara is brilliant, capable of solving magical puzzles that stump others. She's also adaptable, able to blend in with nobles or thieves as the situation requires. And her charm allows her to gather a network of loyal supporters. But her vulnerability is her pride. She can't stand to be seen as wrong or foolish, which sometimes leads her to make rash decisions. As we write scenes with Zara, we need to let these different facets shine through. In one chapter, she might outwit the loyal guards with a clever illusion. In another, she could show unexpected kindness to a child, revealing a softer side. Later, her pride might cause her to lash out at an ally who questions her plans. Now, here's a secret that master storytellers have known since ancient times. A great trickster villain doesn't just make your story more interesting, they make your hero better too. Think of trickster villains as a dark mirror for your protagonist. They often have similar skills or backgrounds, but they've chosen to use their abilities in very different ways. This contrast helps define your hero's character and challenges their beliefs. Let's go back to our example of Zara. Perhaps our protagonist is also a magician, one who chooses to stay within the bounds of accepted magic. Every time they encounter Zara, they are forced to question whether the rules they follow are truly just, or if there might be merit in pushing magical boundaries. A trickster villain also serves as a catalyst for your hero's growth. Their unpredictable actions force the protagonist out of their comfort zone. Zara's schemes might push our hero to develop new magical skills, confront their own prejudices, or make difficult moral choices. Moreover, a well-crafted trickster villain can bring out sides of our protagonist that might otherwise remain hidden. Maybe Zara's wit and charm draw out a playful side in our serious-minded hero. Or perhaps her manipulations force our protagonist to confront their own capacity for deception. The dynamic between hero and trickster villain should be a dance. Sometimes they are at odds, sometimes they are reluctant allies, but always they are pushing each other to new heights. Consider these compelling examples. Batman and the Joker in the DC Comics. The Joker with his unpredictable schemes and dark humor constantly challenges Batman's moral code and adaptability. The interactions force Batman to question the limits of his no-killing rule and often blur the line between order and chaos. Or take Frodo and Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. Gollum, corrupted by the ring, serves as both guide and threat to Frodo. His cunning and duplicity test Frodo's compassion and resilience while also mirroring the potential fate that awaits Proto if he succumbs to the ring's influence. Well, let's talk about Sherlock Holmes and Professor Moriarty. Moriarty, basically the Napoleon of crime, matches Holmes in intellect, but uses his brilliance for nefarious purposes. Their chest-like battles of wit push Holmes to his mental limits, showcasing how a worthy trickster villain can elevate the hero's game. These pairings work because the characters reflect and challenge each other in compelling ways, embodying the intricate dance between hero and trickster villain. The trickster's cunning and moral ambiguity force the hero to grow, adapt, and often confront their own hidden natures. By developing this kind of complex relationship, you create a dynamic that will keep your readers eagerly turning pages, wondering how each encounter will play out. Now, if you found anything useful in the video so far, please consider giving it a like to help me grow the channel. Thank you. Moving on. Let's talk about how a trickster villain can supercharge your plot. Because these chaotic characters are plot catalysts par excellence, capable of turning your story in exciting new directions at a moment's notice. The key to using trickster villains effectively in your plot is to embrace unpredictability. Unlike a straightforward antagonist who might have a clear linear plan, a trickster schemes should be layered and adaptable. Here are some ways to weave trickster elements into your plot. First, there's the long con. Have your trickster set up dominoes early in the story that don't fall until much later. This creates satisfying aha moments for your readers. Then we have shifting alliances. Let your trickster work with different factions throughout the story. 
They might help the hero one day and hinder them the next. Also consider to include unintended consequences. The trickster's actions should sometimes spiral out of their control, affecting the world in ways even they didn't anticipate. And lastly, remember win-win schemes. Create scenarios where your trickster benefits regardless of the immediate outcome. Their plans should have multiple layers, allowing them to advance their goals even when they seem to fail. Let's see how this might work with our trickster villain Zara. Early in the story, she might plant rumors of a magical threat, causing the kingdom to divert resources to defend against it. Later, we reveal this was a distraction to weaken security around an ancient artifact she wants to steal. But here's where it gets interesting. Let's say Zara's rumor accidentally uncovers a real threat. Now she might have to work with the hero to save the kingdom, all while trying to keep her original plan on track. This approach keeps your readers guessing. They'll be engaged not just in what happens, but in trying to unravel the trickster's true motives and plans. Remember, with a trickster villain, even failure can be interesting. Maybe Zara's plan to steal the artifact fails, but in the process she discovers a new piece of information that sets her on an entirely new scheme. By letting your trickster villain drive the plot in unexpected ways, you create a story that constantly evolves. Each twist becomes a new threat in an intricate tapestry, with readers piecing together the larger picture alongside your characters. Now, one of the most powerful tools in a trickster's arsenal is their voice. The way they speak, the words they choose, can be as effective as any spell or weapon. Crafting compelling dialogue for your trickster villain is crucial to making them truly memorable. Here are some key elements to consider when writing dialogue for your trickster. First, we have wordplay and wit. Tricksters love to play with language. Give them clever retorts, puns, and double meanings. Secondly, there's flattery and charm. They should be able to make others feel special and understood. Then consider half-truths and omissions. The best lies are wrapped in some degree of truth. Your trickster should be a master of saying true things in misleading ways. Also remember probing questions. Tricksters gather information by asking seemingly innocuous questions that reveal more than the answer intends. And lastly, consider misdirection. Like a magician, a trickster's words should often direct attention away from their true intentions. Let's look at how this might play out in a conversation between our own personal trickster Zara and the hero. I know you're planning something, Zara. Whatever it is, I'll stop you. <laughs> My dear, if you knew what I was planning, you'd already have stopped me. Or perhaps you'd be helping me. I'd never help you. Your magic is dangerous and forbidden. Forbidden by whom? The same council that banished me for daring to push the boundaries of what's possible? Tell me, in your studies, have you never once wondered about the magic that lies just beyond your reach? Notice how Zara employs several trickster techniques in this short exchange? She doesn't directly deny the hero's accusation. Instead, she uses wordplay to cast doubt on the hero's understanding of the situation. Her response, if you knew what I was planning, you'd already have stopped me, cleverly implies that the hero lacks crucial information. Even her choice of addressing him with my dear is a deliberate use of flattery meant to subconsciously influence the hero. It creates a false sense of familiarity and warmth, potentially disarming the hero or making them more receptive to Zara's words. By saying, or oh, perhaps you'd be helping me, Zara then pivots to misdirection, suggesting that her plans might actually align with the hero's interests. This plants a seed of curiosity and uncertainty in the hero's mind. When confronted about forbidden magic, Zara doesn't defend herself. Instead, she questions the authority behind the rules, appealing to the hero's potential desire for knowledge and power. Her probing question about the hero's curiosity serves a dual purpose on top of it. It gathers information about the hero's mindset while also tempting them with the allure of forbidden knowledge. Throughout the entire exchange, Zara's words carry multiple layers of meaning. She challenges the hero's assumptions, appeals to their hidden desires, and subtly positions herself as a potential ally rather than an enemy. This is the essence of trickster dialogue. Every word serves a purpose beyond its surface meaning, weaving a web of ambiguity, intrigue, and manipulation. When writing these exchanges, think about the trickster's goal in every conversation. Are they trying to gather information, sow discord, plan an idea? The words should always be working towards that goal, even if it's not immediately apparent. Remember, the true power of a trickster's voice isn't in grand speeches, but in quiet moments of manipulation. A well-placed word here, a thought-provoking question there, these are the tools that allow a trickster to change the course of your story with nothing more than their silver tongue. 
Now let's zoom out for a bit and look at how a trickster villain can enhance your entire fantasy world. These morally ambiguous characters don't just adapt to your plot, they can fundamentally shape the way your readers perceive the rules and ethics of your fictional universe. Trickster villains thrive in the grey areas between good and evil. By their very nature, they challenge black and white morality. This gives you as the author a powerful tool for exploring complex ethical questions within your fantasy setting. Here's some ways to use trickster villains to add moral complexity to your world. First, consider questionable systems. Let your trickster expose flaws in seemingly benevolent institutions. Maybe Zara's forbidden magic reveals corruption in the magical council. Then we have necessary evils. Put your characters in situations where the trickster's morally dubious methods might be the only way to achieve a greater good. Don't forget about shifting perspectives either. As your trickster's true motives are revealed, it might cause readers to reevaluate earlier events in the story. Also think about cultural relativism. If your trickster comes from a different culture than your protagonist, use this to explore how morality can differ between societies. And lastly, remember unintended positive consequences. Sometimes, the trickster's selfish actions might accidentally bring about positive change, complicating the notion of villainy. For example, let's say Zara's quest for power leads her to break an ancient magical seal. This releases not only dangerous energies, but also long-lost knowledge that could help the kingdom prosper. Now your characters and readers must grapple with whether the end justifies the means. Remember the goal isn't to excuse villainous behavior, to create a nuanced world where readers are encouraged to think critically about right and wrong. But as we approach the end of our journey through the world of trickster villains, we come to perhaps the most challenging part. How do we bring their story to a satisfying conclusion? The key to a great trickster ending is to make it both unexpected and inevitable. It should surprise your readers while still feeling true to the character you've created. Here are some approaches to consider. First, there's the backfire approach. Let the trickster's downfall come from their own clever plan, backfiring in a way they couldn't predict. Secondly, consider a redemption arc. Perhaps your trickster realizes the error of their ways and chooses to use their skills for good after all. Then there's a hollow victory. The trickster achieves their goal, but at a cost that makes the victory unsatisfying. Another option would be the long game ending. Reveal that the trickster's apparent defeat was part of an even grander scheme. And lastly, don't forget about karmic justice. Have the trickster undone by the same type of manipulation they used on others. Let's return to Zara for some examples of how her story could end. One, her attempt to control the ancient magical artifact backfires, trapping her in the very prison she intended for her enemies. Two, Zara realizes her quest for power has corrupted the very magic she sought to protect. As a result, she joins forces with the hero to undo the damage she caused. Three, Zara succeeds in overthrowing the magical council, but finds that ruling is far less satisfying than the chase for power. But now she's left alone at the top, alienated from everyone she once cared about. 4. Zara's apparent defeat is revealed to be part of an elaborate plan to fake her own death and escape to another realm, setting up potential future conflicts. And 5. The hero turns Zara's own manipulation tactics against her, tricking her into revealing her plans to the entire court and destroying her credibility. Whatever ending you choose, the key is to make it feel earned. The resolution should be the culmination of the trickster's choices throughout the story, not a random twist. It's also important to remember that ending the trickster story doesn't necessarily mean ending the character. Even in defeat, a good trickster always leaves a door open for their potential return. After all, you never know when you might want to bring a little chaos back into your fantasy world. But tricksters are of course not the only way of adding some villainous spice to your story dish. At times, choosing something even darker is the perfect way to go. So check out this video here where I walk you through the horrific depths of Lovecraftian villains and other types of otherworldly entities.